So with that, I would like to introduce a very special guest, Dr. Raj Shankar Ghosh, Senior Advisor, Vaccine Delivery, Bill and Dr. Raj Shankar is a physician with 25 years of engagement in public health program policy, planning, implementation. Dr. Raj Shankar has worked in variety of organizations that range from small field level non-governmental organizations to state health services, World Health Organization, international developmental partners as PATH and Institute for One World Health. Currently in donor organization, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Some of the key positions he held in career include surveillance medical officer and Southeast Asia regional coordinator for national polio surveillance project of WHO in India, technical director immunization, Path, Path India, and many such prominent positions. Raj has led a team of clinical researchers to develop drug for neglected diseases like visceral, I can't even pronounce the name, okay, some, some, some disease of, in, in the South Asia has influenced policy decisions in the new vaccine introduction in multiple countries in South Asia and spearheaded public health program planning and implementation in India and Nepal. Raj Shankar has multiple publications, has authored chapters in vaccines, books for pediatricians. He was awarded the prestigious fellowship of Indian Public Health Association in 2014. I invite Dr. Raj Shankar Ghosh to deliver a special keynote on gearing up for vaccine delivery, India and global perspective. Over to you, Dr. Raj Shankar Ghosh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, can we you can. hear me? Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, to NASCOM for inviting me to this uh, occasion. Uh, I have uh, had the privilege of hearing two brilliant speakers, and I'm so much uh, enthused and uh, so much stimulated by the, uh, you know, uh, by by what they said. My topic today is gearing up for vaccine delivery, India and global perspectives. This is a large uh, canvas uh, to talk about. One thing that we need to know and remember that vaccines do not save lives. Vaccines have never saved lives. What has saved lives is vaccination, the program. We can have multiple vaccines, but if the vaccines do not reach the people for whom they have been developed, the vaccines are meaningless. Therefore, today we will talk about the program, the vaccination program, a little bit globally, but more focusing on India. But before that, if from 50 years from now, 100 years from now, one would like to look back and think about the year 2020, what would be the PRP that they would think has made the vaccines successful within a period of 12 months? Three things, technology, partnerships, resilience. Technology Resilience Partnerships, TRP. Overall, any vaccination program, starting from a routine immunization to large vaccination campaigns like this, if plotted on a piece of paper, is very simple. It rests on a platform of three Ps, product, place, people. There needs to be a safe, efficacious, and affordable product that needs to be available at a place that is accessible and acceptable to people. And there need to be three kinds of people involved. One, those who come to take the vaccine for themselves or for their dependents those who mobilize the people to the vaccination center, and then trained health workers, people who deliver the vaccine. So if we have a product, a place, and the three kinds of people, 
the vaccination program happens. We have been hearing about HPV vaccination and I was delighted that it was raised by my earlier speaker. And uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Vasin, for also kind of uh, giving your support to the HPV vaccination program through your words. One of the reasons why HPV vaccine or HPV vaccination does not happen in India is because the product is not available. Globally, there is a shortage. In India, there is HPV vaccine in two states, Punjab and Sikkim. Gavi, which is a supporter of the India's vaccination program, would very much like to support India for the HPV vaccination. There's a global shortage. Therefore, a vaccination program will always depend upon these three things that we need to remember. This is true for routine immunization. This is also true for COVID vaccination. Now let us come to the COVID vaccination issue. The COVID vaccination, but before we come to COVID vaccination, we must understand what happened with COVID. Suddenly in the first quarter of 2020, the world realized that there was a virus, the COVID virus, which they very well knew what it looked like, but it presented in a very different manner. It presented in a complete different fashion with its infectivity rate, with the kind of devastation that it caused, and therefore the world was turtled. They also understood that in order to challenge the virus, one of the most important things would be a vaccine, but then there were other public health tools, for example, the social distancing, the masks, the sanitizers, which could be used along with vaccines and or until the vaccine was available. But along with the vaccines, all of these need to be used, but there was no vaccine. Therefore, they needed to develop a vaccine. And there was not the luxury of really taking a long time to develop a vaccine. It had to be developed with speed. It had to be a safe vaccine. It had to be a efficacious vaccine. And most importantly, it had to be an affordable vaccine that the world could take. Now, there was another challenge, and this was a very unique challenge that the disease presented as a pandemic, the whole world was affected. Rich nations, poor nations, low middle income countries, everyone was affected. Therefore, there was this competition amongst the world, not only to develop the vaccine, but also to secure the supply of the vaccine. Now, global agencies also had to come together in order to build a platform that would not enable disproportionate hoarding of the vaccine by countries. For example, if you look at Canada, Canada has already pre-booked vaccine in nine doses per citizen. Many other countries have also done large number of doses. Countries like India, they have not. Now in doing this, they had to build a platform. And that platform was something that we know today as COVAX platform, in which countries representing two thirds of the world's population came, up, came together to pledge that they would commit to taking the vaccine. They funded a part of it. They made what we call an advanced market commitment. Gavi, WHO, large philanthropist organizations like BMGF, manufacturers, all of them came together. And that is the partnership that we were talking about in our TRP. Now, when all of this was happening, there was the scientific bodies, there were the scientific bodies who were looking at what would be the benchmark that we had to accept. We can compromise with everything except with safety. So on safety, there was no compromise. The vaccine had to be safe for human beings. In terms of efficacy, a benchmark was set that it needed to be at least 
50% efficacious. And that is fine because efficacy of a vaccine and the effectiveness of a vaccine are very different terms. The effectiveness of the vaccine, which means that how the vaccine will ultimately have an impact depends upon multiple things. The most important thing being coverage. If we have a very high efficacious vaccine and a low coverage, the vaccine is not effective. If we have a moderately efficacious vaccine, have a very high coverage, it is good. Now, countries like India, which did not have a very strong health system, struggled to understand how they would respond to this. However, India had three things which were in its favor. One, that India had over the last 15 years, or almost 20 years now, because uh, starting from the Menafrivac that Sedam built, has developed a very strong domestic vaccine manufacturing industry. India's vaccine manufacturers supply almost 70% of the low and middle income countries vaccines through Gavi today. The second advantage that India had was that India has experience of conducting very large programs, even if it is not vaccines. Elections, no country conducts elections so meticulously, so scientifically, and in such large extents from Bastar to, to Bombay in the way that India conducts it. India had that experience. And the third advantage that India had was that India's in-house technology farms were very capable of rising up to the occasion and addressing the challenge. I will come to the technologies a little later. There are two things that also happened with the COVAX facility that the world had to address. One, a new form of approval needed to be set up. This is the emergency approval. The emergency approval of the vaccine had to follow the same criteria as is required for a regular approval, but it had to be in a way that the vaccines that are being hello sorry the vaccines that are being developed are developed in a manner that follows the efficacy and safety but has some kind of collaboration with the regulatory agencies to ensure that they do not pass through the tedious and long processes of regulatory approvals that are there because this was being developed in an emergency process. And the third thing that they had to do is that the stability of the supply had to be ensured. And the stability of the supply could only be ensured if different manufacturers joined hands and came together to collaborate between each other. So we saw excellent collaborations between manufacturers from UK to manufacturers from India and all of them joining hands to produce one vaccine. Now, India has two technologies that will address some of the challenges that we heard today on the Aadhaar issue of registration and all of that. In India, there is a, program, there is a technology called the Electronic Vaccine Intelligence Network, which was first piloted in Uttar Pradesh and now scaled up across the country for the supply chain of vaccines in the routine program. The government of India has decided that this will now be scaled up to, call, to be called as something called co-win, which means we will win over COVID. Co-win is a transformation, technological transformation of even. What will it do? It will do four things. First, it will register every eligible person according to the different phases that the government has decided on the vaccination program. The second, it will validate when the person comes to take the vaccination through some kind of identification. The third, it will enroll any adverse event that happens 
during the vaccination program into that software. And finally, it will generate a QR code certificate for every person who has been vaccinated that stays with the person for lifetime. Therefore, this COVID software is being launched across the country. And this is a transformation of the technology which has been done with miraculous speed supported by UNDP. And uh, the even uh, software has been developed by an Indian firm called Logistimo. The second thing that they did was that they understood that given that this vaccine was developed very fast and that there is a lot of eagerness as well as apprehensions around the vaccine in the community, all the adverse events needed to be registered and electronically the data needs to be supplied to experts who would see whether the vaccine and the adverse event that happens are associated or not. This software is called the Safe Pack, which is being rolled out by WHO in partnership with various other uh, organizations and the government of India, obviously, which will collect electronically every data of adverse event and also identify if they are associated with the vaccine. I also want to say that there is a lot of hope that India will ultimately roll out a program that will defeat all the technology, all the experience that India has. And just a few days back when we were talking uh, in the, in the uh, you know, ministry uh, about this program, there was a very nice term that someone talked about, the IEC. IEC means innovation, experience, and finally, not to forget the commitment of our health workers. In, two th in, in 1995, when I was a medical officer in a primary health center in uh, West Bengal, the Pulse Polio program was launched. Exactly the same things that I'm hearing today about the largeness of the program, about whether India can actually deliver vaccine to every citizen, what the questions that were asked that day. We did not have the technologies that we have today. We did not have the systems that we have today. India covered in the first round 97% of the population that it targeted with the oral polio vaccine. India can do it. We will face troubles. We will you know, have uh, roadblocks, but there are enough tools in our hand in order to overcome this. The only thing that someone also said is that we need to know that the E that we have been talking about experience needs also to mention about empathy. We need to do it with empathy. So we are hopeful that India and uh, the citizens of the country will all of us join hands in order to make this program successful. Thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Raj Shankarji. Uh, amazing. I mean, you 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 did bring out you know a lot of uh, the, the perspective we never had. Even though we all are following news, we all are reading you know uh, with, with, with a lot of attention what is going on. But uh, the perspective on the platforms that are being developed globally, that are being developed in India, and the confidence that you bring, you know that we are well positioned to deal with it i think is is, is very good to hear for a person from a person uh, who who's, who knows a lot about this field having worked in this area and sitting in an organization which has a very global view and working actively on uh, mitigating this crisis from from all over the world so 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 nice to have you and from behalf of the entire team of nascom thank you thank you very much to you